You're listening to the REI Marketing Nerds Podcast, the leading resource for real estate investors who want to dominate their market online. Dan Barrett is the founder of AdWords Nerds, a high-tech digital agency focusing exclusively on helping real estate investors like you get more leads and deals online, outsmart your competition, and live a freer, more awesome life. And now, your host, Dan Barrett. All right, everybody, welcome to this week's episode of the REI Marketing Nerds podcast. As always, Daniel Baird here from AdWords Nerds. How are you? How are you doing? What are you doing right now? Are you driving? Are you running? Are you puttering around the kitchen? (laughs) I am legitimately curious. I am legitimately curious. What are you up to right now? I hope it is awesome. I hope you're having an awesome day. Um, day is just starting here in rainy, gloomy Connecticut, and it's a really good day to get into a really fun topic. This week, we are talking about real ROI, real return on investment. This is a metric we use at AdWords Nerds. We use it with our clients. I use it with my own marketing. When I do marketing for my business, I use this metric. And it is a real lifesaver. And I want to dig into what I mean by that. But to do that, I've got to take a step back a little bit and talk about marketing, which of course, you know, this is the stuff I love to talk about. I love to get into these marketing topics that are going to be universal, that are going to be, you know, just as relevant in 10 years as they are today and capable of really making a huge impact on you and your investing business. So let's take a step back and talk about what effective online marketing is really all about. If you are going out there and you are looking for motivated sellers and you are looking to you know, boost your reach and get more of these leads and help more of these people, you're going to have to make decisions. And in actuality, right, online marketing is essentially just a long stream of decisions. You've got to decide whether to run this ad or that ad. You've got to decide to run with this targeting or that targeting, this list or that list, this channel or that channel, right? I mean, it's just decision after decision after decision. That's all it really is. And the better your decisions, the better your results. Okay, if you pick the ad that everyone loves, you're going to have better results than if you pick the ad that everyone hates right? If you pick the channel where there's a lot of growth, you're going to have more success than if you pick the channel that's dying, right? Effective decisions give us better results. This is all pretty obvious. So the question becomes like, how do I make effective decisions? If I'm getting into an online marketing universe and I'm targeting motivated sellers, I'm trying to grow my investing business, how do I make the decisions that put me on the right path, right? How do I make the decisions that are going to make me more money? How do I know I'm making those decisions? Well, the best decisions obviously are based on data. We can't know really what's going to happen. We can't look into the future and with 100% certainty say, yes, if I do X, I will get Y result. The best we can do is make um, probabilistic guesses, right? The best we can do is say, all right, based on all that I know, based on all the data I have, I expect this to happen. Okay. So the better the data we get and the more data we get, the better our decisions are going to be. And the better our decisions are going to be, the better our results are going to be. All right. Online marketing, one of the things that makes online marketing great is that it provides a lot of objective data. You can launch an ad really quickly, like if we're doing AdWords, right? You can come up with an idea for an ad in AdWords. You can type that ad in, that ad will be launched in under an hour, and it can get in front of thousands of people. And you can see exactly how many people saw the ad, exactly where the ad was when people saw it, exactly how many people clicked, exactly what it cost cost you and exactly how many leads that ad generated. That's amazing, right? It's amazing. If you are coming from the direct mail world 
or you're coming from the world where you know you had to spend three months making an ad in a photo studio with a model and then you ran that ad in a magazine and the magazine had to come out and then some people called you and some people didn't. It's tough, man. You didn't really have a clear sense of what's going on with online marketing. We basically see everything that's going on as it's happening. It's really incredible. So the amount of data that we get is incredible. The objectiveness of that data, you know, the accuracy of that data is incredible. And that allows us to make really, really good decision. All makes sense, right? The more data I get, the better the decision I make, the better the results that I get. All that, I'm sure, makes some sense. Here is the problem. And there's a problem specifically with real estate investing. If you are a real estate investor, I hope you are if you're listening to this podcast, but if you're in real estate in general, uh, specifically if you are a real estate investor and you're going after motivated sellers, all right, there is a very real problem with this model of get the data, make the decision, get the result. The problem is that real estate investing is relatively low volume. Okay, real estate investing is relatively low volume. What do I mean by that? I mean, if you look at any market, let's say, whatever, Chicago, I'm going to pick off the top of my head. If you look at that market, you can picture a big circle containing everyone that's searching online in Chicago. Okay, so we got a big group of people, everybody that's searching online, tons and tons of people, right? The hundreds of thousands of searches every single hour, who knows, right? Lots and lots of people, lots and lots of searches. Now, out of that big circle, everyone who's searching about real estate, that's a smaller circle within this circle, right? So we got all the people that search and then all the people that are searching about real estate. Well, that's a smaller group within that group, but hey, it's still a pretty big group. And then within that group, so within the large group, we've got the real estate group. And then within the real estate group, we've got people who are searching for selling a home. That's an even smaller group of people. And then within the group of people that are searching for selling a home, we've got the people that are really motivated. And that's an even tinier slice. So we've got the big group of people searching and then the smaller group of real estate searchers and then the smaller group of people searching about selling. And then we've got an even smaller group, a really, really tiny group of people that are really, really motivated and they're searching about selling. The better your targeting gets, meaning the more motivated your leads are, the lower the volume of them you're going to get just in general. If you imagine going out and saying, okay, I only want to target the people that are 100% ready to sell tomorrow. They're not going to care what I say to them. The second I walk up to them, they're going to give me the keys to the house and they're going to say, take my house. All right, if that's the only kind of person you want, there just aren't that many of those people. There just aren't. Right. And then even if you have the total number of those people in your area, you're talking only about the people that are searching online. And then even then you're talking about only the people that click on your ad. And even then you're talking about only the people that actually contact you. So the tighter the targeting, the better the targeting, the more motivated the lead becomes, the less of them there are, the lower the volume there is in your market. Therefore, and I'm going to bring this into AdWords, but it's true in Facebook, it's true in any channel you're going to work in. The very best keywords, by which I mean the keywords that produce the leads that are the most motivated, often have very little data. I often use the example, and we're talking AdWords here, I often use the example of two keywords. We've got sell my house, and we've got sell my house fast. All right, so two different keywords, sell my house and sell my house fast. Now sell my house might have, let's say a thousand people searching for it in a month in your market. I'm just, these numbers are hypothetical, right? It might have a thousand people searching for sell my house in your market this month. You might only have 10 people 
that actually type in sell my house fast. And five of five of them are probably real estate investors. Okay. So the difference in volume as you target higher levels of motivation is dramatic. It's dramatic. And so the keywords and the targeting segments of the population that investors most want to go after often have the lowest amount of volume and have the least amount of data. What this ends up doing is like if you're an investor and you're you're managing your marketing or doing your marketing, you log into your AdWords account, you're looking at all your keywords or you log into Facebook and you're looking at all your ads and you say, oh, you know, this one just isn't generating anything and no one's even seeing it. It's not running. It's not any good. I'm going to pause it. And what ends up happening is that you end up pausing stuff that would have been very, very profitable. It was just slow. It didn't have the data. Just because one person searches for sell my house fast in your market every month doesn't mean the keyword sell my house fast is not going to generate lots and lots of profit for you. It's just going to do it here and there. Are you an investor who wants to dominate your local market? Do you want more leads and deals online? Then download your copy of the Motivated Seller Blueprint absolutely free at www.adwordsnerds.com slash gift. What are you waiting for? Go to www.adwordsnerds.com slash gift right now to get your copy of the Motivated Seller Blueprint. So this is the thing I always stress with everyone. I say no leads and no data from an ad or from a keyword or from a campaign does not mean that ad or keyword or campaign will not have a really great ROI. This is a critical mistake that will absolutely cost you tens to hundreds of thousands of dollars over the lifetime of your investing business. And this is not an exaggeration. If you are getting rid of or giving up on things that do not have enough data, you are leaving money on the table. And someone else is going to come along and take that money. Someone always does. It might as well be you. I honestly would rather it be you because you're listening to my podcast. (laughs) Okay. So, Again, no leads, no data does not mean there's no ROI. But that begs a question because just because something doesn't have leads, doesn't have data, of course it doesn't mean there's no ROI, but it doesn't mean that it's a great keyword either. It might, it might be a real stinker. We just don't know. So what is the solution? Okay, and this is where real ROI comes in. And I'm going to tell you exactly how we calculate it, exactly how we use it, and exactly how you can use it to grow your investing business over time. So what is real ROI? Real ROI is a metric we use to calculate the potential payoff of a low volume keyword or ad. So the key here is that we are calculating a potential payoff. We are making a guess about what the payoff may be for something that doesn't have a lot of data behind it. This is critical to maintaining long-term profitability because a vast majority of the stuff that you can target as a real estate investor is going to be low volume. And especially if you're working in a smaller market or you're working in a smaller budget, you're just not going to have the data volume that some of the bigger people have. And that's fine. But we need to be able to calculate what our potential payoff can be so we know if we're spending our money in the right way. We know we're being smart with our budgets, right? Even with large budgets, a lot of your keywords, a lot of your ads are going to need you, especially in the beginning, to try to guess what their potential payoff could be. And if you're doing this, you're going to be able to avoid pausing things too early, you're going to be able to avoid leaving money on the table and you're going to make a lot more money over time. So let's get into calculation and how we do this. Okay. Now, when we have low volume on a keyword, usually what we're meaning is that either not a lot of people are searching for it, meaning we have low impression volume. Nobody's seeing our ad, right? No one's searching for it or no one's clicking. 
And because no one's clicking, we don't have a good sense of our cost per lead. Okay. I don't really know what it's going to cost me to generate a lead from this keyword. Either not enough people are seeing it, not enough people are clicking on it, just whatever. I don't know what my cost per lead is. All right. Now to account for that, what we do is we use national averages from other investors that we work with and the cost per click that we're seeing in the local market to make an educated guess. And you can then combine that guess with your deal value, the amount that you take home per deal, and your close rate, the amount that you typically, you know, amount of leads you typically need to put a deal under contract, and you can use that to calculate the ROI. So again, what we're doing here is we are using national averages for other investors that we work with. I'm gonna give you a bunch of these averages in a second, but we use national averages as a rule of thumb, and the cost per click that we see in the market, we combine that with the average amount of money we make per deal and our average close rate, and we use that to calculate an ROI. As a podcast, it's a little hard to do that. I've actually made a tool for you to do this. Uh, if you know me, you know I love a good spreadsheet, okay? If you go to adwordsnerds.com slash ROI hyphen calculator. So adwordsnerds.com forward slash ROI hyphen calculator. And by the way, I'm going to put this link in the show notes for this episode. So you can go to adwordsnerds.com slash podcast. That's a little bit easier to remember. Adwordsnerds.com slash podcast. I'm going to have a link to this spreadsheet. Just find this episode. Click the link. You'll be happy as a clam. So this is a spreadsheet that's going to do the work for you, but I'm going to walk you through it. All right. Let's say we have less than five leads on a keyword. We really don't have any data for this keyword, and I want to calculate the potential ROI. So I went through this. I picked the, the keyword, we buy houses CT or we buy houses Connecticut. This is a keyword from my market. And I'm taking much of this data just from clients that I've worked with. So let's say the cost per click, the amount we pay when someone clicks on this keyword, which I can see in my ad account, is really, really high. So let's say it's $75, which is incredibly high, okay? That's like, I think, three times the national average. So we're, we're being really conservative here, okay? So $75 cost per click. My estimated cost per lead is about $1,000 uh, $1,071. That's super high. How did I get that number? Well, I'm using a 7% conversion rate on my landing page. That's about average for, let's say, if you're using an investor care website or typical, you know, investor kind of website for these keywords, about 7% conversion rate is pretty typical. Okay. So, 7% of my clicks are turning into leads. Um, so I'm going to guess I need about $1,000, $1,071 in ad spend to generate a lead from this keyword. Woo, that is high. Okay, it's high. Now, let's say my close rate is 10%, meaning for about one out of every 10 people I talk to becomes a deal under contract. This is probably the number that varies the most from investor to investor. So you gotta put in your own close rate here. A lot of people, their close rate is about one out of 20 for online leads, so we could do that, right? But the 10% close rate was a real number from a real client that we worked with in Connecticut, so I use that. Now let's say your average deal value, which is the amount that he thinks he can take home on this flip, on average, and look, everybody's deals vary pretty wildly. So from one deal to the next, you may be making 5, 10, 40, you know, whatever it is. Um, but let's say the average is $20,000. It's about average for Connecticut, okay, when you're doing flips, all right? So again, $75 cost per click. That estimated in this spreadsheet about $1,071 per lead. That's ridiculously high. I mean, just so, 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 so high, right? Estimated close rate about 10%. Average deal value about $20,000. That means my cost per deal from this keyword, the amount it's going to take me to generate a deal from this really expensive keyword is about $10,714. So this guy has to spend with this keyword, just this one keyword, 
$10,714 per deal. Now, of course, he makes about $20,000. So the ROI, the return on this really, really, really cripplingly expensive keyword is about $9,285 on one deal. So this keyword's generating $9,000 of profit. But it looks terrible. If you look at the cost per click, if you look at the cost per lead, it looks terrible. And this is one of the things I always point out. We don't care about the cost per click. We don't care about your cost per lead. I don't care about how much you're spending. I don't care about your click-through rate. I do not care. I care about your return. I care about how much money you are making. Is this account generating more money than you put into it? If you put in a dollar, does it give you $2? If it does, run it forever. Run it forever. Let's change some of these numbers. So let's put the cost per click at something that's a little more realistic, but still high. So let's say $30. That's a little bit more realistic. And I'm going to change the um, close rate to 20%. Okay. I'm going to change the deal value down to 10000 so I'm going to go through this again. But let's say, uh, again, we're looking at a keyword. It's got $30 cost per click. That is pretty high. That's going to be similar to some of the more competitive markets in the United States. So $30 cost per click. That means my estimated cost per lead. And remember, I'm saying I haven't generated a lead from this keyword yet, but we're going to guess using a 7% conversion rate. Estimated cost per lead is about $428.57. It's high. It's a high cost per lead, $428. Bucks. That's high. I want my close rate to be 5%. Okay. Now, that's one out of every 20 leads. So I'm spending $428 per lead estimated on this keyword, and I'm only closing one out of every 20. Let's say my average deal value is $10,000. That means it's costing me $8,571 to close a deal. $8,571. That's a lot. I'm only making 10. But that means that my return on this keyword is $1,428. I made... 1400 bucks off this keyword. Now, do I want to run that keyword forever? Maybe I do, maybe I don't. But it's making me money. It is a positive ROI. So even in a situation where the cost per lead's really high, my close rate isn't great, my deal value is a lot lower, I'm still making money on this keyword over time. And that's the key here, over time. I might not be making money this week. I might not be making money this month. But if I turn this keyword off, I will make less money overall than I would have. And what you do with this information, look, I'm not saying you always want to run these things. I'm not saying you got to just keep spending money on something that doesn't generate data. I'm not saying that at all. But I'm saying that you need the real information you require to make a smart decision. Objective data is only valuable to us if we actually use it to project forward and understand what we can make from the marketing that we're doing. So look, this is one of those things where it becomes uh, a lot more useful if you actually get in and mess around with it. So I want you to go to adwordsnerds.com slash podcast. Find this episode. It's episode 11, real ROI. Find this episode and click the link to go to the ROI calculator. It's a free tool, just like a Google spreadsheet. You copy it over, you make changes, and you can start putting in your own numbers. Put in your own keyword data, your own campaign data, your own ad data, and start figuring out what your real return on investment from your marketing actually is. All right, everyone, I hope that was useful. Let me know if you have any questions. Like I said, if you're if you're not in our Facebook group, you gotta jump in there. It's uh, adwordsnerds.com slash group. Real ROI, the tools, we originally posted it there and we post a lot of free uh, training in there every single week. So if you're not in there, there's really amazing investors in there and it's an incredible group. No spam, no hitting everyone up for deals, just really high quality content. So again, that's adwordsnerds.com slash group to join the Facebook group, adwordsnerds.com slash podcast to find this podcast episode, all our other ones, download the free tool. And hey, if you like this and you're getting value out of this podcast, let me know. Uh, subscribe, 
uh, leave us a positive review. I'd really appreciate it. All right, I'll talk to you soon. Dan Barrett out. Cheers. This is the podcastfactory.com.